Hey everyone, I'm going to take a quick step back and just get you guys to get your Rhino files on the same page. So when we first open up Rhino um, for the first time, it looks like this. And I know some of you have made some adjustments, that's totally fine. But I wanted to um, make sure that everybody is using the same commands that I'm using as we go forward in the tutorials. I realized that uh, some people don't have aliases set on their Rhinos. An alias is just a shortcut for a command. So if I type in C, circle is going to come up. If I type in CO, it's going to ask me to copy something. If I use L, line is going to come up. But on your Rhino, when you press L, some different command will come up. There's lasso. Um, so it, it's really, Rhino doesn't come preset with these sort of shortcuts. And these shortcuts are coordinated with AutoCAD. So um, if you know the shortcuts and get to know them in Rhino, once you make a transition to AutoCAD, it's going to be pretty seamless. So how we can load these aliases is if you make sure you're in the standard panel here, you can click on this gear wheel called Options. Another way to access this is to just write Options in the command line or go to View, Display Options. Everything is going to bring you to the same place. So if we go into aliases, uh, mine is already preloaded. I have all of these aliases loaded already, but I'm just going to go restore defaults. And that's going to take me back to where you guys should be with your aliases. Now I have provided a file for you to upload. So go to import and navigate to your downloads or wherever you've placed the file, select it and open. So it's going to say, do you want to replace it? And I'm just going to say yes to all. That's going to bring in all of these aliases. And now we can be sure that as we go forward with tutorials, when I give you guys a command, you will be able to access the exact same action that I am. The next thing I would like us to do is go into our general options here and make sure that show ISO curves is turned off. By default, it's turned on. And those are all of those little subdividing lines that some of you guys saw in your draped surfaces yesterday it kind of threw some people off that they were seeing those. Just uncheck this and that will ensure that as you model going forward, you're not going to see the surface ISO curves by default. So hopefully that won't throw anybody off from here on. Then we'll go to files and make sure that this is set to autosave every 10 minutes. Um, this is the location of your autosave file. So if you are a person who constantly forgets to save your work, this is going to probably be a lifesaver because Rhino does tend to crash, especially if you don't have super optimal settings. And having a backup file in this location is uh, going to probably save your butt more than once. So if you are like, oh no, I didn't save my file, um, you can go to this path and locate the most recent autosave. Now you only have one chance to recover it, so make sure that as soon as you open it, you do save it as a file. You can also set a condition, always save before something. And you might want to fill this in later once you get to know Rhino more, but for now we can just leave it blank. Okay, that's all the options that we're going to change for now. Um, some people have changed the appearance of their colors and that's fine, but I would just recommend that you um, make sure that you're working in an environment that has enough contrast for you to work in and so that you can um, you won't get thrown off if you see a different color scheme while I'm giving the tutorials. Okay, so quick view around Rhino. Now that you have used some of these commands, I feel like it's the right time to tell you what all these panels mean. I think that if I had just started by showing you all of this interface and showing you all of the panels, it might have been a bit overwhelming to you because you wouldn't know like where to look for something and why to use it. Um, but I, I think that now that you've used a few commands, these are going to be less intimidating. So while there's a lot of options here, there are really only a few toolbars that you need to get familiar with. The first is the standard toolbar, and that has all of these options down here, which are uh, point, line, and surface modeling tools. And then we have some like general tools up here for zooming, uh, rotating, uh, panning, etc. So if you ever lose your layers panel, if you have done this and you don't know where to find your panel, 
you can click on the layers here. Go back and dock it on the side. Um, so you can always access things like your properties, the rendering panel, options, etc. All of these uh, options here are also up here. So don't fear if you have accidentally deleted your sidebar. And the other uh, tab that I use here is the selection tab. Selection tab allows us to select things in a variety of different ways. This is really, really helpful, especially when you get to have complex objects in your models. So being able to invert your selection, select the last created objects, select your previous selection, which I use quite frequently, um, and select by color or select by layer. That's really, really helpful as we go forward. So that's kind of the other tool I use. Honestly, I don't use the rest of these bars. Um, I really stick to standard and uh, I just kind of enter the commands on the command line or select them from this sidebar here. It's worth noting that all of these commands are duplicated in this high menu up here. So if you're looking for curve tools and you want to create a line, it gives you this flyout. That is the exact same options that we have from this flyout over here. So if you're a words person, you might want to use this menu. If you're a pictures person, you might want to use this menu. But just be aware that they all contain the exact same tools. Finally, we have our bottom area, and here is where we can set our snap points. I've talked about this before. Um, it's giving us kind of information about our model here. It tells us we're working in millimeters in this particular file, um, tells us what, our, what kind of options are set. Do we have a grid snap on, ortho, etc. cetera? Um, we're gonna get more and more familiar with this stuff as we go on, but usually I keep mine to O-snap, planar, and gumball, and then I, I have the rest of it deselected unless I specifically need it. That's it. Um, just wanted to give a brief overview and uh, I hope that's helpful as a sort of backwards look at what we have been doing and how we work in Rhino.